Hi everyone, it's Emily, and for today's video, I wanted to celebrate the RPG genre and the influential titles that have really shaped it over the years. And to help me, I invited 10 very special guests to share which title they think really redefined the RPG genre as a whole. Now, of course, this is not an exhaustive list, but I hope you guys enjoy our picks and also share down below which RPG you think redefined the genre. Hello everybody, Tark's Gauntlet here to talk about one of my favorite JRPGs of all time. From the Tales of franchise, and of course, thank you Emily for this opportunity. Nowadays, the term action RPG is almost synonymous with the Tales franchise, but this wasn't always the case. As far as action RPGs go, the Tales series was far from the first to the pitch. With games like Crystallis, The Legend of Zelda 2 Link's Adventure, yes, that one was an RPG, The Ease games, and even Secret of Mana beating it to the punch and making a pretty good name for the genre. But the Tales of team envisioned something different for the genre when they launched their first entry, Tales of Fantasia. Using Street Fighter as a basis of inspiration for their combat, implementing special abilities and a light combo system, and dropping the speed and action meters other games were using, they would speed up the action over the average ARPG and change the genre for the foreseeable future. And it wasn't just the action that raised the stakes for the genre. The story and characters featured were fantastical and intriguing Intriguing. The world and level of detail was top of the class. And as a technical feat, Tales of Fantasia has very few equals for the SNES. Sadly, North America would not see a legitimate release of the game until 2006, almost 11 years after its debut, and this would be on the Game Boy Advance. And unfortunately, the GBA port was less than ideal. Thankfully, many fan translations of the game across many different systems are also in circulation. So if it's something you ever want to look into, you have more more options now than ever before, and it's definitely still worth a play. Despite some old school encounter rates anyway, they're still as brutal as ever. But yeah, Tales of Fantasia changed everything. Hi there everybody, Alex AK Quality here, and thank you so much to Emily for having me be a part of this collaboration. It is truly an honor. So my pick for a redefining RPG is a bit of an interesting one, as I believe this game redefines the genre by going back to the classic turn-based combat in a new and modern way, and that is Octopath Traveler. Octopath Traveler was first announced in January 2017, and I was immediately enthralled with the graphics and the premise. In a market full of open-world, large-scale RPGs, Octopath embodied the feel of a traditional turn-based RPG that we hadn't seen in quite a while. Octopath breathed new life into the turn-based format by keeping it engaging. With various classes and unique abilities throughout your eight party members, the break system, which encourages the player to snoop out the weaknesses of their enemies, and the boost system that allows you to power up your moves even further, Combat is extremely fresh and satisfying. Not only that, but the gorgeous HD 2D art style, well, though existing long before Octopath, became something the gaming community has come to expect when it comes to similar titles. The customization of your own adventure is a big point too, with a wide variety of characters to choose from with a variety of different stories and numerous side quests, it gives the player choice in how they want to go about their own adventure. Also, Octopath 2, it does all of this while continuing to improve upon the ideas set by its predecessor, reshaping and redefining this type of RPG even further. This series absolutely reignited my love for classic turn-based RPGs. It came at the perfect time of my life where I wanted something that still embodied that classic turn-based feel what was still fresh and new and exciting that kept me engaged throughout the entire thing. I think that Octopath really modernized the idea of turn-based combat, so even those new to the series can still have a really good and enjoyable experience as well. Hey guys, I'm RNG Gamer. I play all my games randomly. Thank you, Emily, for having me on the video. I really appreciate it. My pick for an RPG that redefined the genre? It's Demon's Souls. FromSoft had experimented with their spin on the Western RPG with their King's Field series, but it wasn't until they released Demon Souls on the PS3 that they completely redefined the Western RPG and created the Soulsborne genre. They took the medieval dungeon crawling style games that were so popular in the West at the time, injected them with the atmospheric horror that was all the rage in Japan, and then topped it off with enough character building mechanics to pretty much overwhelm everyone. They then took that and threw it into a lore-rich world unlike anything anyone had ever really seen up to that point and cranked the difficulty up to 11. They even developed an online system where players from around the world could choose to help their fellow adventurers by leaving them clues, directions, or even jumping in to help them defeat one of the game's many, like, really extremely difficult bosses. Of course, for every person that wants to help you, there were twice as many trolls that just wanted nothing more than to lead you astray, 
have you fall to your death or even jump into the game themselves to completely ruin your progress. They made the player work for every second of enjoyment that they got out of the game, and what they ended up with was an extremely rewarding and fulfilling experience that has influenced countless games that came after it. That's why Demon Souls is my pick for the RPG that redefined the genre. Hello, I'm Food for Dogs, and today I want to claim Xenoblade Chronicles X as a game that significantly shaped and redefined the future of RPGs, certainly the future of the Xenoblade series. Xenoblade X was Monolith Soft's first high-definition game, and they made it an engineering marvel, in my opinion. The scope and the scale of the world of the planet Mira is simply breathtaking. The motto of this game is very much rush nothing, explore everything. The game also has many flaws, and I think learning from those mistakes was absolutely essential for the future of the Xenoblade series. What we do have, however, is a planet that has probably not been surpassed in its creation, with seamless transitions, stable performance, there's one game where they finally brought everything together perfectly, Xenoblade 3. The great characters and tight, compelling narrative we know from Xenoblade way back combined with this luscious, incredible open world to explore. Without X, all this would not have been possible technically and design-wise. Thank you very much. Well, here we are. Not too shabby, huh? Hello there, and what is hip? My name is Tyler, and my channel is a 32-bit musician. And today we are going to be talking about none other than the infamous Super Paper Mario. A quick thank you to Emily for having me on. Games like Final Fantasy, Ultima, Dragon Quest, Dragon Warrior have told us what an RPG should be. But if you were to take that criteria and put it into Super Mario Brothers on the NES, would that be considered an RPG? Nintendo kind of thought so. The game oozes creativity while maintaining the core fundamentals of what a traditional JRPG is it masterfully blends and blurs the lines between genres which is so unique 2d side scrolling becomes 2d side scrolling shoot 'em ups akin to the likes of Gradius. there are moments where we harken back to the earthbound days where they make fun of itself and turn into a completely turn-based game i see so much of this in the game near in the series near within the first 15-20 minutes of Nier Automata, you are doing a top-down shooter and then you go to an action RPG platformer and it completely changes all the time. With a story that rivals the like of Final Fantasy uh, and characters with charm that earns them the right to sit alongside the Chrono Trigger crew in that infamous campfire scene and gameplay as addicting as the original Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo Entertainment System, there truly is no other game, let alone RPG, like Super Paper Mario, and it is 100% an adventure worth having. Hi Emily and everybody else, this is David over at the channel David Vink, and thank you so much for having me on your channel. One of the RPGs that I really do think redefined the genre for me growing up as a kid was Dragon Warrior 3 back on the original NES. Let me paint a picture for you here. Prior to this game's release, all that we really had in North America as far as turn-based RPGs was Dragon Warrior 1 and 2, as well as Final Fantasy. And while I loved those games, Dragon Warrior 3 was a complete game changer. Not only did this show me that games could have continuing storylines, after all, Dragon Warrior 3 wrapped up and completed the Urgic trilogy that began back in Dragon Warrior 1 and 2, but it also introduced me to real-world locations and towns from Eliahan, based upon Australia, Romali, based upon Rome, Isis and the Pyramids on Egypt, Azaram on the Middle East, Portuga on Portugal, and Japang on Japan, just to name a few. Also, the replay value was just through the roof, 
since you could choose your party of three from a ton of different job classes. And then, once those classes reached level 20, you could then change them into whatever job class that you wanted. The class changing wasn't just kind of like a straight upgrade like it was back in Final Fantasy, it was something wholly unique. And also, not to spoil anything here, but when Rai found out that the final boss wasn't actually the final boss, and that there was a whole other dark world hidden behind him, I was floored. Never before had I seen multiple world maps in any RPG. So many things that we take for granted in today's RPGs began right back here in 1998 with Dragon Warrior 3, and that is why it was such a game changer to the genre. Hello, hello, it's Miss Bubbles. Thank you, Emily, for inviting me to be part of this fun collab and giving me a chance to gush about Witcher 3. Even though this is my favorite RPG of all time, we cannot deny how influential it has been to the genre. And the best way it has done so is through its side quests. I mean, the devs make you care about a freaking pan, and I don't think that many games are capable of doing so. And even though more and more RPGs are trying to replicate what Witcher 3 has done with side quests, I still think they have a long way to go. Even as I'm playing Final Fantasy 16 with its epic story, barely a couple of side quests have resonated with me, but we can definitely see that developers are trying to dedicate more effort and love to side quests now. Another thing Witcher 3 has done is the 30 second rule, where every 30 seconds something interesting will happen in the world, and we can see that in RPGs like the new Assassin's Creed, Hogwarts Legacy, or Elden Ring, and these are perfect to keep the player's attention on the game. By the way, these random encounters are also found in Skyrim, which was released before Witcher 3. However, Witcher 3 is the one that inspired more open world RPGs to take that route. This game redefined the genre in many more ways, but we're running out of time. So thank you again, Emily, for inviting me, and I hope to see your bubbly face on my channel next time. Bye. Hey folks, Jay from Cold Knights here. Sui Koden 1 and 2 are two of the most treasured parts of my physical game collection. When M asked me to come up with a game that I felt changed the future of JRPGs, my pick is certainly Sui Koden. When Sui Koden flew onto the scene in late 1996 in North America, it set the tone in many regards for the future of JRPGs. With lovely sprite work and character art and a delightful combat system, using runes and featuring many powered up combo attacks with various factions in your party, it laid the groundwork for many RPGs to follow. With the 108 stars of Destiny all being recruitable and many usable in combat, the story is loosely based on one of the Chinese literary classics, Water Margin. Add in a unique base building system that allows your recruits to open shops, host mini games, and offer training, you get a unique and homey feeling hub. Also of note are the other alternate ways to battle. RTS skirmishes work off a rock, paper, scissors format and offer unique fun with your recruited units. Each battle like this ends in a duel with the enemy commander. Upon defeating them, you are given the ultimate power to recruit them or kill them. Sui Koden not only changed the landscape at the time, but set the tone for future games in the genre. I'm very excited to see how well the remasters come out, and if they can give generations of younger gamers the same appreciation we all had coming up with them. Hi, my name is Mandy, and for my choice of RPG that defined the genre, I choose Fire Emblem Awakening. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys know about the history of Fire Emblem, how it was supposed to be the last Fire Emblem game, but little did Nintendo and intelligence systems know that this game was gonna literally awaken the franchise. Fire Emblem Awakening for me was my first Fire Emblem game, and I'm not alone in this statement because a lot of people said they found out about Fire Emblem through Awakening. One of my favorite features of the game is the characters and their development. The support systems really flesh out these characters and make you want to actually care about them and I love that feature because I remember just getting emotionally attached to pretty much all my units and I feel like in Fire Emblem Awakening they really did the support conversations so so well. And another thing I loved about Awakening is its accessibility to new players and old players. You have the usual if they die in battle they're dead but they also added a casual mode so instead of dying right there they reach 
retreat and you have your units all alive. Casual mode is an awesome introduction to the franchise. Not only welcomes people, but it still has classic mode for those die-hard fans who like to play like that. And another aspect that I love, I'm, I'm kind of embarrassed to say, but it's the marriage mechanic. I, I like playing Cupid with all my units for some reason. Some of it's corny, but I'm all for it. Overall, Fire Emblem Awakening has undoubtedly left a huge mark in the strategy RPG subgenre. With its attention to accessibility and the slice of life elements, the game appealed to a whole new subset of gamers in this once notoriously difficult franchise, which is still going strong to this day. Hello everyone, Ren from Hallowed Be Thy Game here, and I want to thank Emily for the chance to chat about what I consider to be one of the most influential JRPGs SMT3 Nocturne for the PS2. It is solely responsible for revolutionizing both SMT and Persona, which are my favorite game series in the genre for combat with the press term battle system. This was pioneered in Nocturne. This battle system follows the basic concept of prioritizing your party to target the elemental weaknesses of your enemies. Each party member starts with a baseline of one attack per party member. Every time you hit a weakness of an enemy, you are granted an additional turn. It is simple in concept, but with the added autonomy of being able to craft your own party of demons and balance your turn order to bolster your strengths while capitalizing on the weaknesses of your enemies, it quickly becomes one of the most gratifying systems in any game to me. Both the SMT and Persona series would go on to adopt it with their own interpretations as they would carry on with respective series. Nocturne has achieved nine mythical status due to its difficulty, but I would argue that it is still one of the most rewarding experiences I've ever had in a turn-based game. It is a phenomenal experience, and while you roam the ruins of the vortex, you quickly begin to learn the dance of the press turn battle system and utilizing buffs and debuffs. Nocturne kept things eerie, difficult, and crazy fun to play. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share what I consider to be an integral and influential JRPG. And if anyone listening hasn't tried it, then I would highly suggest giving the remaster a go. I wish you all the best and I'll see you next time. I hope you enjoyed hearing all about everyone's selections. And the game I decided to go with is King Hearts on the PS2. I played this back in the day when it originally came out in 2002 and it's truly remarkable how a simple idea of incorporating well-known Disney characters and worlds into a brand new game by a well-known Japanese RPG studio reached such international success and really opened the world to the RPG genre on a scale like never before. While there have been plenty of action RPGs that came out prior to Kingdom Hearts, the simple combat with light 3D platforming elements paired with familiar faces made the genre accessible to a whole new generation and really opened their eyes to what RPGs could be outside of, say, Pokemon. The franchise has evolved over the years with each iteration, constantly experimenting with different combat systems, especially in their spin-off titles. And it also arguably has one of the most convoluted stories in all of gaming, but there's no question of its impact on the genre when it comes to experimenting with different types of action combat. Like we've seen with some other Square Enix IPs like Final Fantasy, in hopes of reaching a wider audience. Team Hearts is obviously a very successful and influential title, but I think it's one that we sometimes take for granted, at least here in the RPG community. So I wanted to highlight and celebrate it along with all the other great titles mentioned here today. Not only because of its influence on my own personal RPG journey, but how it's been able to touch so many generations of gamers over the years. I hope you guys enjoyed this collaboration video. It was a lot of fun to put together and definitely check out everyone's channels if you haven't already done so. All their information will be provided in the description box as well as the pinned comment. As I mentioned earlier, this is clearly not an exhaustive list, so please let us know which RPGs you think redefine the genre and help us add to this list and celebrate RPGs and how it's evolved over the years. So that's it for this video, and until my next one, bye guys.